Family and fellow soldiers, I'm the professor, and this is the moment of truth. The pressure is on all Western uh, nations to stand vigorously behind uh, the Ukrainians. But the, there's also these potentials for fractures that this is one thing Putin is good at, is trying to dig into the fractures, particularly racial fractures around the world. There have been reports of, of Africans, of, of African students, particularly medical students and others who were in Ukraine studying, and also, you know, just non-Ukrainians from around the world who study in Ukraine, not being able to get out. Uh, we're just showing some of those pictures right now. Um, and it's, it's created an opportunity for disinformation and for fracturing the united support that there has been for the ukrainian effort we are already starting to see the fracturing uh, across social media where people are saying ukraine is racist so why are we supporting them or ukraine is a white country this is a white problem and that fundamentally misunderstands ukrainian history and the ethno ethnographic makeup of ukraine ukraine has afro-ukrainians and these african students um, are residents of ukraine ukraine is a multicultural multi-ethnic country and we have to keep that at the forefront and yes these videos that we're seeing at the border are horrifying but we should also focus on the fact that there are a lot of people on the ground helping and many of them are getting through and getting to safety we have to be very careful with how we frame this question, but also to the extent we allow our emotions drive our responses. Because Russia will take advantage of this and use it as dis the disinformation, as we have seen with the George Floyd protests in 2020, and we've seen in the 2016 election. What I said is that I want to hear from, you know, the African Union. I want to hear from specific countries that have students. And folks out there, listen to official information that's coming from these nations, not to somebody with lots of numbers after their title on Twitter, because that's not the best source of information. But also, and I've been saying this on social media, if you are an African or Indian or Roma um, resident of Ukraine, the best thing to do right now is to stay put and try not to cross right now because, I mean, this is a war zone and it's only going to get worse. Absolutely. And anything bad that happens to somebody of color at those borders will immediately be picked up by the Kremlin and used to try to bolster their utter failure thus far to try to take hold of a country that doesn't want them. I suppose this is what counts as MSNBC's rebuttal to all of the bad publicity that the Ukrainians have been giving themselves for their treatment of the Africans during this war. Now, what you just saw was actually pieces from an eight-minute segment on Joke Reed's little sideshow. And when MSNBC posted it on their YouTube page, though they entitled it, Refugees Report Discrimination at Some Ukraine Border Crossings. That's the actual name that they gave to the video, but only two minutes of the eight-minute video dealt with that. Well, if all they were going to do was to blame the Africans and to say, well, it's not as bad as all that, and we can't blame the Ukrainians for their own behavior, why even do that? It's because when a story has gotten away from the white media, they then try to see if they can get out in front of it and put their spin on it. But in this case, they know that ignoring it isn't an option. Too many people have already seen it and are already talking about it. And because it's gaining traction, people are asking serious questions about racism in Ukraine, which is a completely separate question from the war going on there. But the white media is demanding that people cheer for Ukraine because it's a last bastion of democracy in Europe, apparently. The pressure is on all Western uh, nations to stand vigorously behind uh, the Ukrainians. Normally, when the white media tries this, they try to treat it like a one-and-done story. They act like, well, we addressed it and we're moving on. It's a dead issue now. We're not coming back to it. But in this instance, they understand the black media is on the case. So it doesn't matter what the white media is doing. We're going to be talking about this regardless. So instead, they're sending out part of the incompetent operative class, Joke Reed, with some empty-headed expert whose entire job is to give white people permission to ignore us. In fact, to demand that we be ignored. You know, the last time that Joke Reed was talking like this, it was about reparations, remember? She said anyone talking about reparations is a Russian bot. How do you spot Russian bots? Just look for certain words that they use. And then she went on to list all of our talking points. Now, this time around, she's not claiming that we're Russian bots, but she's still drawing from the same well and saying that we're helping Russia, which is a distinction without a difference. Just because Vladimir Putin is invading Ukraine doesn't mean that the black people in Ukraine should accept the Ukrainians' racist discriminatory behavior. 
When people are forced to walk several hours in the freezing cold of winter because the Ukrainians, and probably the Polish too, are refusing to allow them to leave from the nearest possible border crossing, that is imprisonment. So we see this pathetic, desperate effort to try to invalidate these incidents. They can't deny that they happen, so they're trying to minimize them. First up, you had Anna Wannabe Arian Navarro with the ridiculous and totally unsubstantiated claim that she had some friend on Twitter who told her that none of this was really happening. So all those videos were made up, right? Now it's Joke Reed's turn. She's saying, okay, it happened, but it's all a Kremlin plot to distract people from Vladimir Putin's evil deeds, to make the Ukrainians look bad, and to fracture the precious unity that we must have at this moment for the Ukrainians. We are already starting to see the fracturing uh, across social media where people are saying, Ukraine is racist, so why are we supporting them? Or Ukraine is a white country, this is a white problem. Can you believe, though, that that empty-headed heifer actually had the nerve to discount the idea that people are simply pointing out that Ukraine is a white country? Ukraine is a white country because Ukraine's leaders, the people who Vladimir Zelensky has working for him, they said so. Me, I'm sorry. It's really emotional for me because I see European people with blue eyes and blonde hair being killed. Children being killed every day with Putin's missiles. You have the deputy chief prosecutor of the country. He gets on international television to make a plea to the world for help. And what is his plea for help? It's a bit of white pride self-aggrandizement. That's how he asks the world for help. Think about the blonde-haired, blue-eyed children. Oh, he knew exactly who his audience was. This wasn't a segment Joke Reed was doing. It was an attack. This entire PSA for black subservience in the face of white aggression was a damned insult. Joke Reed telling us to just shut up and listen to our betters. Hey, don't listen to these people on the internet or on Twitter. You should listen to me. Okay, and what next? Is she going to say don't watch any videos showing Africans being mistreated in Ukraine? In fact, if there are any black people who are saying that racism exists, don't watch those videos. You need to wait and see what some paid-for bootlicks on cable TV say before you actually make up your mind. These black bootlicks for the white media? Oh, they know better than us. Because that's basically what she said with that crap about the videos are horrifying, but there's people on the ground trying to help, so... The message is clear. Stop listening to those black media people. Unless the person talking to you has a show that was given to them by some racist people at NBC, don't you pay them no never mind. If they show you video of black people being mistreated, don't get outraged. Don't allow our emotions to drive our responses. Ain't that what that Varnon woman said? We have to be very careful with how we frame this question, but also to the extent we allow our emotions drive our responses. Interesting, because so far Ukraine has only sustained a very small, tiny loss of life compared to, say, Sudan, Syria, or Iraq, you name it. And yet the white media and people like Joke Reed and this Varnon woman, they've been telling all of us that the very fate of democracy itself no longer lies in what's going on in D.C., but now it's over there in the Ukraine. Why? The fate of democracy hangs in the balance on what happens in Ukraine, and they've used nothing but appeals to emotion to get people to support Ukraine in this case. Now, did the white media use appeals to reason? No, they used images of white people in lines, white people crying, white civilians making Molotov cocktails, grandmothers holding assault rifles. Uh, yeah, because Granny Guchmeyer is going to hold off the Red Army. While there's no questioning that Ukraine is definitely in danger, there's also no question that a lot of this stuff is being set up simply to get people to feel a certain way. Nobody's actually going to put their freaking grandmother out there on the front line against the Russians. The freaking recoil from an assault rifle would probably knock her out if not kill her. What I'm saying is it's a little bit late for the boneheads over at MSNBC to be saying, don't allow our emotions to drive our responses. That's exactly what the white media has been doing. The white media's coverage of Ukraine, the way they've been going about it, has been the epitome of using emotion to drive people's responses. I showed you about how you had all of these white 
reporters who are talking about Ukraine as if this place was freaking fairyland, as if it's just the most wonderful place ever. Why you, war in Europe? Uh, yeah, because there were no wars going on in the '90s in Yugoslavia. I'm sorry, the former Yugoslavia, Kosovo in the '90s. That wasn't going on. I mean, war is a foreign thing to Europe, right? And they didn't have war in Ireland up until the turn of the 20th century, right? Right? I saw a story in Britain about this guy who clearly you can look at him and tell he's not white. And yet here he is going to the Ukrainian embassy in London and asking them to let him sign up for the Ukrainian army so he can go over there and fight the Russians. He wants to volunteer to fight. Now, considering that this guy isn't white, for his sake, he better hope the Ukrainians don't assign him to the Azov Battalion. They don't like non-whites very much. But when you look at what it was that Joke Reed was saying, there's a particular talking point that's been used by a lot of these bootlicks, whether it's Van Jones, Al Sharpton, Joy Reed, or whomever, and it's that black people have an obligation to suffer and die in silence for the political convenience of white people. Joke Reed sounded bold telling black folks they need to ignore all this anti-black racism. Yeah, 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 I know you guys are seeing this mess, but don't lose sight of the big picture. And that's defeating Putin. So Ukraine can remain independent and free. Free to do what? To hold demonstrations saying to free Derek Chauvin? To protect and promote neo-Nazis in the Ukrainian military? What exactly is Joke Reed and the white media telling us that we need to be supporting? Some virtuous, altruistic Ukrainian government, or as the empty-headed woman put it, Ukraine is a multicultural, multi-ethnic country. European people with blue eyes and blonde hair. Putin is a bad guy, and so is Kim Jong-un, but if those two were to go to war, am I supposed to root for one of them? Not every fight has a good guy and a bad one, is what I'm saying, and I judge a nation's virtue or its lack thereof by their behavior. And my judgment of Ukraine isn't just based on what they've done to the Africans just in the last week. We can go back nearly a decade and see the country as racist from its sports fans to its military. That's not fracturing the unity. That's simply stating the facts. How are you going to let an openly neo-Nazi militia officially become part of your army and keep that neo-Nazi militia around with a stylized Nazi swastika as their unit symbol? How are you going to defy international objections when you're told to disband them and then tell me that that makes you the good guys? The good guys fight racism. They sure as hell don't protect it. But that's what the white media said, and they did it by leaving out the mountain of information that they didn't want people to see. And if people do bring it up, well, here comes Joke Reed and Anna Navarro and some other women of color who are going to be saying, you can't mention that. We can't let Putin win. The stakes are simply too high. Uh, where have we heard that before? Basically, we hear it every two to four years from the Democrats. We know what you black people are saying. We know the harm that's been inflicted on you. But you guys can't be asking for anything. You sure as heck can't be fracturing the unity of the party. Why, we've got to win in November. The stakes are too high. Democracy hangs in the balance. A democracy that black people in this country have never experienced. We can't let Putin win. Um, you can't let Putin win. Black people in Ukraine, they're fighting both Putin and the Ukrainians. That wasn't Putin's army that was pointing guns at those Africans. It wasn't Putin's army that was shoving those Africans off the trains leaving the country and telling them these are Russian-only trains. Russians weren't the ones who were blocking the Africans from crossing the border to safety. The Ukrainians are doing all that. And most likely the Polish as well, which is why the Nigerians were telling their people to avoid the Polish border altogether and try to cross at Romania instead. This is what Joke Reed and the good folks over at MSNBC are telling us that we shouldn't talk about, we shouldn't mention. Fracturing the unity. Uh, somebody needs to tell the Ukrainians they're the ones fracturing the unity. Shouldn't she be telling Vladimir Zelensky that he needs to tell his thugs and his racist government that they need to stop discriminating against black people? Wouldn't that be a lot more effective? Nope. The white supremacists are never obligated to change their behavior. It's black people who better sneak around and duck and dodge and try to just stay out of their way. Whenever white supremacists attack black people, it's always our fault. We're always lectured about how we should have done something different, or we have some clown giving us advice 
on what we can do to make sure the racists don't have a chance to attack us. And their advice always consists of basically hiding your homes or stay put, as the woman put it. Keep out of sight and whenever they do mistreat you, well, just take it in stride. Don't lose sight of the big picture. This Kimberly Varnon woman, she's the most condescending, patronizing heifer I've seen in a long time. You know, she talks the way that I would expect a condescending white liberal female to talk. These videos are horrifying, but we should focus on the fact that there are people on the ground helping. Uh, yeah, never mind all these black people who are being mistreated, being forced to walk several hours trying to leave the country. We should just focus on the people who are trying to help instead. Don't worry about the Africans. Don't focus on them. Focus on these other people, mostly white. We'll be focusing on them instead. That's the entire point that you hear consistently throughout what they say. Ignore the black people. Ignore the black people. Ignore what they're saying. Just ignore them. Who was on the ground making sure that this mess stops happening in the first place? The fact that this Varnon woman didn't even pretend to answer that question, that tells us everything we need to know. We have to be careful with how we frame this question. In other words, niggers, you better watch what you say. That's what she's saying. This is the problem with black people who ally themselves with these white political parties and organizations. You start talking like a white liberal or a white conservative. That means there's a lot of finger wagging at black people no matter what. You see black people being harmed or even killed, and instead of reacting with indignation, if not outrage, instead they give some patronizing lecture, minimizing it and telling us it's not as bad as all that. These bootlicks put on a show when they know mass is watching. They make a show out of their contempt for other black people. But I think the topper had to be when she said the Africans in Ukraine just need to stay put. After all, it's a war zone out there. I've been saying this on social media. If you are an African or Indian or Roma um, resident of Ukraine, the best thing to do right now is to stay put and try not to cross right now. Because, I mean, this is a war zone and it's only going to get worse. Really? Now, notice how she doesn't give that sage advice to all the white Ukrainians who are fleeing the country. She doesn't say that, you know, you, all these Ukrainians leaving, they need to stay put. All these white people just stay put. It's a war zone. She doesn't say that. She saves her advice for the black people. Tells them, you guys need to stay put. Everybody else can leave, not you, though. You just need to stay put. And why do the Africans and the Africans alone need to stay put? Why can't they leave? Anything bad that happens to somebody of color at those borders will immediately be picked up by the Kremlin and used to try to bolster their utter failure. Well, considering that it's the Ukrainians who are the ones carrying out these racist acts, I'd say that's their problem. I mean, joke Reed and the white media, they act as if it's such an imposition for the Ukrainians. Say, you Ukrainians, the odds are a million to one that you can beat the Red Army, so are you going to go to war with them? Absolutely. Impossible is nothing for us. For our homeland, we will do anything. There is nothing we will not do. Nothing is too difficult for us. We will take on the whole world. Great. Uh, by the way, stop throwing black people off the trains and being racist towards black people. Oh, that's impossible. We cannot do that. That's simply too difficult for us to do. I mean the damned nerve of these two. Literally telling the victims of white racism that it's their responsibility to take all the blame for what these white supremacists do. Don't consider yourselves under house arrest. Why? We're doing this for your own good. Because if you niggers, I mean Negroes, try to leave, why? Those white supremacists, they'll have no choice but to be racist towards you and mistreat you and make you walk hours just to try to get out of the country. It's going to be on video and that's going to make them look bad and it's going to fracture the unity of our fragile alliance. Then nobody's going to give the white supremacists and the Azov battalion any weapons or money and Putin's going to come in here and steamroll these people and kill a whole bunch of them and it's going to be all you niggers fault it's not going to be the ukrainians fault for refusing to act like decent human beings apparently that's beyond a number of them but it's going to be your fault because well you just didn't stay indoors and they can't control themselves so you should take responsibility for that that's what they were saying so the africans have an obligation to stay in that war zone now, the white Ukrainians can leave at will, but the Africans, they have to stay. Sure, it's not their home, and they're not familiar with the place, and this is definitely not a place for strangers to be at, but they have to stay. For the good of democracy, no doubt. Well, you got all these people leaving because it's not safe to be there, but they should stay because apparently it's safe for them. So apparently the bullets and bombs and all the munitions and such are going to miss them because they're black? 
Apparently, that's what this Varnon heifer seems to think. You know, if her sage advice is good enough for the Africans, why wasn't she giving it to the white Ukrainians? She's not saying a word about all those white Ukrainians fleeing. She's not saying that none of them need to leave. She just says the black people need to stay put. She's telling the Africans to do exactly the opposite of what the white Ukrainians are doing. Now, the white Ukrainians can stay or leave. Looks like a hell of a lot of them are choosing to leave, but the black people, no, you guys got to stay. Now, since this Varnin woman feels like she doesn't need to tell Ukrainians to stay put, we're left with only one of two inescapable conclusions. Either she doesn't care how many Ukrainians die, so she's not going to advise them to stay put, stay at home where it's safe, don't go out. Or she doesn't care how many Africans die, so she's trying to take away their options and telling them to stay put. It's one or the other. The current situation in Ukraine cannot be safe enough where you can just stay put if you're African, but so dangerous that if you're white and choose to leave, that's okay too. Both of those things cannot be true. The Africans in Ukraine are trapped. They have a violent army threatening their lives on the one hand, and they got the Russian army on the other. Neither the Ukrainians nor the Russians mean the African any good, but the problem is nobody's calling the Ukrainians out for what they're doing. The white media is not even telling them to stop. And did you notice that? You notice that they do some phony sympathy, clearly and sincere. But mostly what Joke Reed does is to attack people like you and me for calling this out. She doesn't say what should be done to stop the racist behavior of the Ukrainians. She doesn't say what needs to be done or anything needs to even be done about it. She just ignores that part entirely. Instead, it's, well, here's what black people can do so that we can stop you guys from having all these videos made because you're making them look bad. You're going to help Putin win. You're going to fracture our unity. Let me tell you something about that unity crap. Ukraine's on the other side of the world. You have black people being murdered here in the U.S. every freaking day. We're being economically strangled. And there's no punishment for the people doing it to us. No sanctions, and there's no money to improve our condition either. But Ukraine makes a peep, and the government's ready to break the bank to help them out. Putin didn't have to fracture any unity because there was never any unity to begin with. What people like Joke Reed and the white media executives that she works for call unity is nothing more than the same old demand for us to suffer in silence. Because what Joke Reed should be doing is telling the Ukrainian government that their deliberate, intentional, racist actions are going to fracture the unity. That's who's fracturing the unity. They're the ones doing it. Not the Africans, and in this case, not even Putin. This is the Ukrainians doing, and it's not just once or twice that they've done it. It ain't just one or two of them. There's clearly a national program at work here, trying to minimize by saying they're getting turned away from some border crossings. Why is no one telling the Ukrainians that there will be penalties for breaking the unity? Put the blame where it belongs. When black people are being attacked, when we're fighting for our basic right to live, you notice how none of these other people are ever told that you can't say anything even critical of black people because you're going to break the unity. You're going to fracture the unity. Nobody's concerned about maintaining unity for black people. Don't say anything that might make black people look bad, otherwise you'll fracture the unity and the white supremacists will win. Nope. In 2020, when the uprisings were going on, the white media was running stories all of 2020 and all the last year saying that black people were attacking Asians, claiming that black people were looting and burning stores, when in many cases it was white agent provocateurs who were doing it. When the uprisings of 2020 happened, the top priority for the Democrats was to get us to quiet down. But to do it without changing anything, they pretend to listen to us, pretend that they were going to propose some policies, and then go back to business as usual. So Joke, Reed, and Varnon, and any of the rest of these bootlicks, they can take their advice and they know where they can put it. We're calling this mess out. And if nobody else is going to be holding the Ukrainians to account for their racism, we're going to be doing it. And if the Ukrainians don't want to be called out on it, there's a very simple solution. Stop doing it. The one thing that Joke Reed and her pal Varnon never even said. Neither one of them said, what can be done to make it where the Ukrainians stop doing this? What can we have to do to make sure the Ukrainians understand they better stop this behavior? Instead, it's all about what black people need to do. And you notice how former CIA director John Brennan was just sitting there like a statue 
but he didn't say a word. He didn't have to. He barely blinked. This is a white man we're talking about here. Especially when it comes to issues of race, definitely when it comes to black people, you always got some white person who just cannot help but to throw in their two cents. Now, on the one hand, someone might try to say, well, he did used to run the CIA, so maybe he knows better than to put his foot in his mouth. But you take a look at his body language. Look at how this guy was looking the entire time. This man was not listening so much as he was observing. And to me, he looked like, well, he looked like a CIA handler who was watching the agents, or rather the tools, that he was supposed to be supervising just to make sure that they do what they're told. Not that Joke Reed needs anyone to make her do their bidding. You guys, you, you need to listen to official sources of information. Well, that's what we've done. We've actually been listening to what it is these African nations have been saying. But of course, we all know when Joke Reed says official sources, what that means is white approved. This is why Joke Reed is still on MSNBC. This is why they still keep her around. She spouts the talking points that they can't afford to. You can't have a white person saying this garbage. So she's their meat puppet. And that little speech she gave at the end saying, anything bad that happens to someone of color would be picked up by the Kremlin. That sounds like something a rabid racist like Mika the Bigot Brzezinski would say. Well, you guys need to make sure you don't fracture the unity and you need to stay indoors and make sure you stay out of sight because anything of a racial nature that happens, if something happens to one of you niggers, if these guys beat you up or if they otherwise mistreat you and it's caught on video, why, why, the Kremlin's going to take that and run with it. She's blaming black people for being harmed by these Ukrainians. That's what this is. It's a demand. That's why she's saying it like that. You guys need to understand, anything that's done is going to be picked up, it's going to be your fault. The Kremlin's going to have ammunition to use and it's going to be all black people's fault. And what she's doing here is dangerous. It is absolutely lethal to black people's safety. She's literally saying that white racists don't have an obligation to stop being racist toward black people. Black people have an obligation not to say anything about it and to stay hidden in their homes so the white supremacists never have to see them. And this is your white liberal network saying this. See, you couldn't have Rachel Maddow or Chris Hayes saying this crap. Mika the bigot Brzezinski couldn't say it either. People would call them out on it. While the entire planet was demonstrating and occasionally even having uprisings over the murder of George Floyd, the Ukrainians were on the other side of the world holding up banners saying, Free Derek Chauvin. And did anyone in Ukraine object? St. Vladimir Zelensky, the pure, was president of Ukraine when this reprehensible act occurred. What did he say about it? What did he do about it? Nothing. And neither did anyone else over there. So when you come to a black person about this, what response do you think I'm going to give? Well, speaking for myself, and this is just me, I'm not going to support Vladimir Putin. In fact, I'm going to support Ukraine. And I will give the Ukrainian government as much support as they've given us. Good day and be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Larry Amayo, Daniel Davis, B1 Mission, Ronald Money, and Bucci. Salute to them and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Black empowerment only exists because of you.